Man uses many forms to preserve bonds with his past. The folk dance has been a favored form for centuries because it recalls the spirit more than the culture of times past. The sleek, tinseled folk dances performed in the United States reflect the core of the American personality. Rhythm, crisp, measured motion. The tempo of living in the United States is precise. Any observer new to the country tends to consider this tempo erratic. Nerves centered on modern gadgets, schedules, clocks, and dissonant city noises. But the American drive to be on the move, to stretch and grow, solidified itself into the national character as early as the 1780s. This was a momentous decade, one marked by the unification of the original 13 states. It was a period which formed a foundation for the expansion which was to follow clear across the North American continent to the Pacific Ocean. It was a decade of creative thought and action. The invention of the cotton gin expanded the cotton fields of the South into vast acres of productivity and prosperity. The busy North and the gentle South joined in a mutual bond of commercial growth. Year by year, new states joined the Union. More cotton, grain, salt meat, and sugar cane floated along the Mississippi River to the New Orleans markets. To accommodate the growing demands of a busy republic, the rafts laden with cargo gave way to larger, comfortable carriers called river boats. As interstate travel became more comfortable, it became fashionable. The commercial river boats became showboats as minstrels appeared. Entertainers bringing to the North a view of Negro songs, humor, and dances. Such performances developed the original American folk dance 
and is performed today with a variety of struts and stances. The iron bands of the railroads were speeding the economy toward western expansion. Barriers of plains and mountains separating the north and the west gave way to road beds of steel and accelerated trade in a new direction. The south pursued its cotton economy. But the west had land. And then, gold. Word of the discovery of gold in the American west brought fortune seekers from all parts of the world, cutting new trails far beyond the railroads in wooden wagons and on horseback. The wagon trains traveled deep into the heart of the ancient tribal life of the American Indian, involving him in a wave of the future he could not comprehend. The Indian first met the newcomer with violence, soon learned craftier ways of besting him. were relieved by equally rigorous forms of relaxation. A favorite sport among the men was the exercise of skill exhibited in breaking a high-spirited colt into controlled obedience to its owner. When the wagon trains were stilled for the night, folk songs from the old world were recalled with fond sentiment, and new ones told of toils encountered in conquering the plains. On festive occasions, pioneer wagon dwellers gathered around the campfire, and another folk dance, Americana, was originated. It is performed today as the hoedown.
The solid wealth of the American West was ultimately found in the grass and in the soil. In the 30 years following the 1860s, more land was brought under cultivation than in all the previous history of the United States. During the same period, the population of the nation more than doubled. The tempo of business kept pace with this growth. The search for quick, efficient methods brought forth an era of ingenuity. Mechanical processes began to enlarge business operations. A communication system linked distant parts of the continent. A steady succession of inventions accelerated the social and economic life of the nation. The horseless carriage was introduced. It proved to be the beginning of an industrial giant. The chapter of big business began in the United States. Industrial expansion followed the route the pioneers had established. The country began to take on sectional identities. The stock exchange became synonymous with New York. Fishing villages meant New England. Steel, Pittsburgh. Lumber, the Northwest Territory. The span from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific had been accomplished. Sociologically and economically, prosperity was the keynote. The young country, like youth in all forms, was exuberant, lighthearted, energetic. The spirit of the times, the 1920s, was clear in a popular dance of the day called the Charleston. It was danced with zest, and today is a favorite in any repertoire of folk dances in the United States. In the 1930s, a jazz form called swing marked the pause before the big explosion of World War II shook the world. Jitterbugging was a big dance of that day, but one had to be quite young and limber to execute it, 
and the style never found its way into the archives of American folk dance. Another, more sedate dance, called the Lambeth Walk, was more indicative of the new calm that had just begun to settle around America, but it too failed to register itself into any repertoire of dance. Post-World War II had its problems worldwide. America was to experience in every little town, every geographic section, every category of living, a sense of responsibility, not only to its domestic welfare, but to the welfare of people in cities, towns, and countries spanning the globe. The network of communications saw television become a mass educator as well as a mass entertainer. Hours of TV documentary and discussion were broken with nostalgic reenactments of days when physical durability was the prime requirement. The legendary West provided a seemingly endless source of material Americana. The folk dance with a story is a style evolved from techniques first tried by Hollywood, further advanced by theatrical musicals, and brought full circle as a mass expression by TV in the 50s. The tale reliving the trials of the pioneer villain facing pioneer justice has become firmly entered in the records of past eras through dance. Every decade has its definitive character. The serious 60s may record its name in dance, but one pauses to wonder who will have the time for that form of Americana in a decade already marked by speed for progress.